nice. <laughs> Just about to leave Durville Island. We're off. Boys are all ready for the ferry. Charlie's doing his video too. Charlie's off. We're videoing each other. Oh, right. How's nice. Durville been? Oh, it's been beautiful, actually. Amazing. Got enough. some power for dinner. Power for dinner. dinner. No crayfish. But... Feed the wakers. Yeah. No yeah. crayfish. But feed the wakers <laughs> motorbike parts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll take anything. Yep, Don't leave your phone charger out. We even upgraded the 790. Yep. Video We're over here. You've got a fish measuring right. mark on me. And oh, Victor, yeah. who's got his brake problems. Yeah. Do you want to show them the power measure? Yeah, show them the power <laughs> measure on Charlie's front <laughs> over, here. over here, Charlie, Charlie, the dedicated outdoorsman. Got calibrated. Look at that. 125 mil. 100. There we go. Power. Legal. There, Nothing there. but legal, eh, hey, Charlie? Yeah, exactly. I'm a bit disappointed in you though, Charlie. There's no uh, crayfish uh, measure. Hopefully, uh, well, hopefully they're so big you don't have to bother. Yeah, yeah, yeah you don't have to worry. <laughs> 54 mil, I think. <laughs> You wanna go back? No, no, you go back. Well done, well done, Carl.
days. So welcome to day five. As you will have already seen, we're uh, leaving Derville Island and just got off the ferry um, and now just heading back along uh, towards Okiwi Bay. Uh, some amazing scenery out over the water along this road. And then we're heading to Nelson. We're going to do a bit of bike maintenance there. So we head there via the Manga Traffic Track, which is a big rocky stick track goes over the ranges behind Nelson um, then we after a bit of bike maintenance we'll be heading out uh, past Tuck and uh, Collingwood got a bit of a funny engine off race down the Tuckaka hill um, which is always a good laugh and then head out to the beaches and ride all along the beaches and uh, across the reef um, to Kaharangi Lighthouse uh, amazing place very, very remote place you're going to get to at low tide so you've got to time it right to get down the beaches um, so yeah about just over 30 minutes of video today so a bit of a longer one but uh, well worth watching to the end and uh, see some pretty interesting terrain and some fun and games trying to cross uh, deep rivers on the beach uh, yeah we'll uh, add a bit more commentary as we go but uh, enjoy the enjoy the video This Mangatapu track, you climb up out of the tree line here and you, we're heading right up to the top of those ranges you can see in the far distance there, so it's a pretty steep track. As usual the uh, GoPro doesn't quite show you how steep it is, but um, she's pretty rocky in places and very, very loose. And I'm following Carl up here, you'll hear us talking, but uh, he rode up this on a push bike, so um, he's mad keen on push biking. And, Bit crazy in my opinion, but I uh, don't think I'll be doing this without an engine. But yeah, it's an interesting track. So you rode all the way up here on a push bike. Hey?
Yeah, right, got numb fingers though. So from here we head down into Nelson, um, the other side of the track's a bit like what we just, just saw, um, just a bit steeper but not too technical. And this is Carl on the left and Aaron, and uh, this is a Nelson Motorcycles. Carl looks so happy because um, he's getting a WP uh, Explore Pro cone valve suspension fitted that he bought while he was there, so one happy man. From now on, known as cone valve Carl, and only drinks sparkling water. So yeah, happy man and uh, amazing suspension. I got to have a bit of a ride on it uh, one day. And this is the engine off downhill racing. So in neutral, you know, I do have my engine on because I was charging GoPro batteries, but um, the neutral, so it's just a lot of fun. Charlie's box! <laughs> Shit. here and then we'll hit the sand and a couple of river crossings so it's pretty good fun. All bad fun, getting some of your ground bikes and all this place. Kind of racing along to try and get the tide, just to hit it dead low. where we head out onto the beach and it um, uh, gets uh, quite tricky some, in some places we're heading over the reef and lots of sand riding one, somebody asked me about sand riding one day and you know the key to sand riding is you've got to stay um, you know to keep your momentum up and try and stay on soft top of the sand and stay away from the wheel ruts you'll actually see um, just up here where I get too slow I'm in a, in a wheel rut and I don't actually have a steering damper on this ride so other than the stock one which is not really suitable um, and so you just see that when you get in those wheel ruts too slow it just pulls the front around and uh, nearly tips you off so yeah key to sand riding is keep your momentum up um, and try to stay out of those wheel ruts at low speed Charlie? 
Oh, I didn't see him, but I've got it on. I've got mine on now. Yes, yeah, so that was Charlie. He was out on the reef there. He decided to drive out on the reef where um, all the seaweed's sitting over the reef. It's all green and it's just those uh, slipperies that he actually fell off there and uh, snapped off his gear lever. So uh, on the, uh, the 500 EXC, so it wasn't, wasn't great. But um, tomorrow we have some attempts to try and fix it. Um, so he had uh, just a tiny stub to change gear on. As you can see here, we're just coming up to the first of the bigger, biggest river, river crossings, and um, and you'll see Charlie on his uh, EXC 500 go through first. He was a little bit impatient, so uh, after seeing him nearly get bogged down and stuck in that in the river, we uh, did a bit more scouting around, and it really pays to scout around a bit because um, if you do, yeah, there's usually a, a way across that's a little bit shallower, so. Um, no one needs a drowned bike when the tide is against you because this is an incoming tide and you'll see from where we've been riding the tide, high tide mark if you get to high tide you can't get through and um, you can't pass the rivers when the tide comes in a bit so um, you don't want to muck around uh, dewatering a bike so it does pay to scout around you'll see by the line we went through that um, it pays off to just spend a few more minutes to find a better place to cross As you can see coming up here where Matt on his 890 goes through, you know, much easier, quite an easy ride through, nice and shallow, so you know that scouting pays off. Uh, we usually send Matt through on his 890 because he's got cone valves which gives him an extra 30 odd mil of uh, travel before he can drown, so uh, just send the guys with the big suspension or, or the 500 through first so that uh, if they drown it's, uh, you, you know you can't get through. As you can see all the way along here um, we keep coming up on having to ride over reef and it's uh, very slippery so you've got a very good throttle control and just um, you know, time your applications of throttle otherwise you'll end up falling off and uh, yeah, it makes for interesting riding but you can tell you know all this reef's normally underwater so from anywhere from about half tide up to full tide it's all underwater so you've really got to get your timing right um, otherwise you, you won't be getting through and uh, it's actually about two hours of riding along this beach so um, 
to get to our destination so you have a relatively small window to get through and to get through at the optimum time when the tides flow. Big river, it's the last big river just before you get into Kaharangi Lighthouse Keeper's house, and so um, it's pretty deep and it changes with every tide, so um, you've got to do a fair bit of scouting to get across. And it's not guaranteed you'll get across because it uh, sometimes can be very deep, so you've really got to hit this one at dead low tide pretty much to get through. Um, yeah, so we do a bit of scouting around here and coming up, uh, someone gets a little bit impatient, so. <laughs> There's a good watch in about uh, another few minutes where Aaron takes his 890 through where he shouldn't have. out the popcorn because uh, you're about to see what you shouldn't do uh, when crossing a river on the beach or any river really. Uh, Aaron gets a little bit impatient on his 890 and he gets away with one because he was very lucky to get through this. It was nearly down. It was a big hole. Uh. He had it full noise. Uh, pretty deep. It was pretty deep.
Uh, wait till you see the GoPro footage. Yeah. As you'll see after some wet boots, yeah. uh, not mine, yeah, so yeah. thanks Charlie for doing some walking in the river. Um, we find a good spot to cross where we can cross without any problem, uh, nice and safely, keep my boots dry. Um, and then we go to see what damage Aaron's done to his bike with these uh, high speed uh, crossing through the river. Is it alright? Is it alright for now? Oh. Hey, has anybody got cable ties easy to get to or something? Hey, hey Aaron. Yeah, I've got dry boots. We appreciate that. Fuck, I didn't even do my bent. I didn't even do my bent up either. <laughs> do you want to take a Do you want to take a bow, Aaron, for the video? <laughs> take a bow. <laughs> uh, that'll be some good footage. I'll, I'll share it with you. Oh.
So Big River is the last uh, river crossing and then the short beach ride um, up to Kaharangi Lighthouse Keeper's Hut. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, tomorrow's day six is pretty much a bit of a rest day. We play around on the beach and do some sand hill climbs and stuff. So uh, just a little quick video of that stuff and um, then it'll be onwards to head further south down the south island. So, Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I uh, really appreciate it if you can hit the subscribe and like button if you like the video. It really helps the rankings, so yeah, much appreciated. Alright, cheers, bye. Welcome to Big River. Yeah. Well, I got onto them and I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. well, they cover soon. No, it's fire's going.